Hello there everyone, today's video we're going to take a look at some pitfalls when you deregister for VAT. So let's say you've been trading, you've been VAT registered for several years and all of a sudden business is not doing, uh, not done so well, a turnover is starting to slip and you think right well I'm, I, I might just VAT register. So if your turnover is below 83,000 then that's basically when you can deregister. It's always a couple of grand less than the registration threshold. So if you turn over more than 85, you have to register for VAT. But if it's less than 83, that's when you can deregister for VAT. But here's a few uh, traps that might make you think twice about deregistering. So the first one is um, retail sales. So let's assume, let's take the example of Sally, who's a hairdresser. And Sally, she has in her profit and loss account £75,000 a year. Now, of course, we know when we're looking at accounts that it's the net figure that's in there, not the gross figure. So she may have a turnover of 75000 But when you add on the VAT, that is 90000 including VAT. Okay? So... But the rules say, the rules say, sales, sales excluding VAT less than 83,000, you can deregister, okay? So her sales, Sally the hairdresser in this example, her sales, 75,000 excluding VAT. So you'd think, okay, well, technically she could deregister. So she thinks, I can't be bothered with all the VAT hassles and the paperwork and the VAT returns. I'll just go back to being not VAT registered. Right. So she deregisters. Now then, what about a pricing? What is she going to do with the pricing? Because, of course, if she keeps the prices the same to the customer, she's still going to be turning over 90000 a year. If, she's, if all of a sudden she doesn't have to add VAT on, but the prices remain the same as far as the customer is concerned, then a turnover is not going to be 75, it's going to be 90. Because that would be the, the net of VAT turnover because she hasn't passed on any VAT savings to her customers. So in that example, in that example, she can't deregister because the, 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 VAT, in, the VAT exclusive price is going to be way higher than it was because she's just pocketing the VAT that she saved. Now, this is a, a classic example of an issue facing a lot of people who price on a VAT inclusive basis. A lot of retailers do that. So it's not a question of they say, right, here's your price plus VAT when they're dealing with a customer. They just say to the customer, here's your all inclusive price. And then you work backwards from that, work out the VAT, whatever's left is your margin. But in this case, if she can get away with having those prices from the clients, the customers, why would she reduce it? The problem is, great commercially, but not for VAT deregistration because. She, she actually will, will continue to have that high turnover. So, assuming then what would practically, if she did really want to VAT register and still be quids in, she would have to drop her prices, in this case, by, uh, say, 10%. So if she dropped her prices by 10% to the customers, she would go from a turnover of 90,000 to 81,000, 81,000 being below the 83,000 deregistration threshold, and she could get away with um, deregistering for VAT. And of course, she's still better off than she was, because in the before, she had 75,000, but she gave the VAT, obviously, to the VAT man. Now, she's got 81,000, so she's six grand better off in terms of her profitability, even though she's dropped her prices by 10 percent okay um so that's just something to look out for if you are a trader quoting in vat inclusive figures and you're thinking about deregistering what are you going to do with the the price of the the price savings are you going to pass it on or are you going to try and uh, reduce those prices to get w w below the the deregistration threshold so next one is property everyone's favorite area of vat property can be a bit of a, a minefield in terms of vat so the first thing to think about is Option to tax, and I've done separate videos on option to tax, but basically, when you opt to tax, you can only do it on a commercial property, so forget resi. So you've got a commercial building, and you have opted to tax the property. And all that means, basically, although it's quite complex, but to boil it down, it means that you have to charge VAT on the supplies of the building. So a supply of a building, there's only one, really, there's rent. 
okay? And also when you sell it, they're the, they're the only suppliers of a building. So if you've opted to tax a property and you've been um, charging rent plus VAT to the tenants of the commercial building that you own, but then all of a sudden you decide to deregister for VAT, you'd like to deregister for VAT, you don't want the VAT aggro and all the paperwork. Well, unfortunately, when you deregister for VAT, there is a deemed supply for VAT purposes of certain assets, and this is one of them. So what you have to actually do is pay over output VAT on the market value of the property at the date that you deregister for VAT. So <laughs> that's so let's say let's say the property's worth half a million. Um, you've been charging VAT on rent to um, tenants for years and you decide to deregister. Well, at that point, there is output VAT payable, 20% of half a million, £100,000 on your final VAT return at the point of deregistering. And that is what we call in the business a dry tax charge. A dry tax charge happens when there's tax payable but no funds to pay it. Because in this case, remember, you're not selling the building. You're not selling it. You're still keeping it. It's just that you are deregistering for VAT. So there is this deemed supply of the building as if it was a sale, output VAT on the market value, but it's not a sale. So it's it's a big deal, uh, this, this deemed supply business when you deregister. So think about that. If you've had enough of the whole VAT regime, but you've got a commercial property that is opted to tax, beware. Okay, next one. Next one, cost uh, the capital goods scheme, the CGS. So, similar kind of scenario. Let's assume that you've got a commercial building, but this time you haven't opted to tax. So when you bought the building, you claim the VAT back, but you haven't opted to tax. You may say, well, hang on a minute. I thought you always have to opt to tax when you've got a building and there's VAT involved. No, you don't. And this is where it's a bit tricky. Because when you bought the building and you, you suffered output VAT because the vendor charged VAT, so you're VAT registered, you claim the VAT back on the building, but you don't make supplies of the building, you make supplies from the building. So in other words, you're not renting any of the building out to tenants, but you are using it for your own business. So you're making business supplies from the building, not of the building. Now that's crucial because you're making supplies from the building and not of the building, you don't have to opt to tax the property. However, there is this other rule called the capital goods scheme that says that any property where you've done that, where you basically claim VAT back at the beginning, but there's no VAT on any rents because you haven't got any tenants, you still are within this window of considering how long were taxable supplies made from the building. Like I said, supplies from the building, if you're making your widgets, not of the building. And there's a 10-year clawback period, potentially. That's how the rules work. So the rules say any property uh, in excess of a quarter of a million comes into this capital goods scheme, which I would suggest is an awful lot of properties these days. That threshold hasn't changed in years. So you've decided that... Um, you want to deregister, but you're only, it was only five years ago that you bought the building that you're trading from. You claim the VAT back five years ago. So at the point of deregistration, there's no output VAT to declare and pay like there is when you opt to tax, but there is an in input VAT clawback from five years previous when you claim the VAT back because you are no longer making taxable supplies from that building because after five years you've decided to deregister. So what happens is this, the, the way the uh, rules work is they say of that 10 year period, there's always a 10 year period, for years six to 10, you won't be making vatable supplies from the building because you're gonna be deregistered. So that is half of the 10 year clawback window. So HMRC say 50% ratio, we will claw back 50% of the VAT that you claimed when you bought the building. Now, again, in that example, assuming it's 500,000 plus VAT, you will have um, claimed 100 grand of VAT when you bought the building. In this case, capital goods scheme, you've got to 
um, you get a clawback of 50 grand. So 50 grand. So nasty surprise here. If you think about deregistering when all these things are going on, what can you do about it? Well, coming back to the option to tax, if you've opted to tax the building, there is a rule that says you can um, rescind your option. You can reverse it and tell HMRC you no longer opt the building, but it's after 20 years. So if you've got a building, let's say it's 18 years that you've had it in this first example, and you really want to deregister for VAT, well, the tip here is just to wait two years. If you simply wait two years, the option to tax can be lapsed. You let HMRC know, and all of a sudden, you've saved yourself um, best part of 100 grand. Okay, so um, that's the, the advice in this scenario. If you're close to the end of that 20-year period, just wait for the 20 years if you're desperate to deregister. Okay, um, so just an overview, just an overview there on pitfalls, traps, pitfalls you want to avoid if you are contemplating deregistering for VAT because your net sales are less than 83 grand. Just think twice, particularly if you're, if you price, if you're in retail or other sectors where you price VAT inclusive to customers and also if you own property, commercial property. So just an overview there on deregistering for VAT. If you like this video, please do subscribe right about there and I'll see you soon.